Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melter Production, and today I'm going to be going over a song I did and released last week called Canticle. So I made this song all with Melter Production plugins, so I thought I'd kind of go over it and show you what I did in case you're interested. Hopefully you are. So basically I have the song here, and it starts off with just an electric piano and drums, so it sounds like this. Now I'll show you the electric piano here. I'm just using this in M Sound Factory. I actually made this one myself, so I think it sounds nice. And I have the drums here, but one thing you might notice is it sounds a little bit band limited. And you probably wonder like, why does it sound like that? I don't hear the full spectrum. And that's because I'm using MXXX on the master track here to create this boxy effect. So what I did here, if I move this over, you see I have a saturator, I have a bandpass filter here, and then I just have, uh, volume here and i believe this was actually not doing volume this is uh, doing the widening so it's in mono and then it opens up so as it plays you should be able to hear it kind of open up and you'll if you look here at the mp1 you'll see the boxy effect kind of moves down like this Okay, so that's what's happening there. I really like that effect. It kind of makes things kind of explode as you go into the verse. But let's get into the guitar loop I have here. And I just made this from scratch, actually. Play it here. This one, I just have a gate normally on there. I use the compressor here. I use this Junko amp just to kind of get kind of a thin sound. Uh, I'm using a cabinet here, the shimmer cabinet on the twinkle setting. Have a delay here set at half notes, and then it's going into a nice small plate reverb. So soloed, it sounds like this. Now, this was a little bit too full at first, so I just used M Turbo EQ to get rid of lots of the lows and some of the highs too, just to make this fit better with the track. And I'm using a little bit more compression here just to make it fit better in the track and not stick out quite as much. So let's listen to the verse here. So the big thing here is this lead guitar. I believe it's this one here. So this is just a vital preset. In a previous video, I showed you how to create like a Steve Vai type sound. That's exactly what this is. I don't think I changed anything in this, to be honest. It's just that preset. So if you haven't watched that video, watch that if you want to know what the tone consists of. After that, I just cut some lows, a little bit of low mids. Uh, in the mid range here, it's kind of nastiness and some kind of a resonances here I cut out. So that's what I did. I can play that solo here so you can hear the difference on and off. If I have the right one. I'm sorry, I was explaining the wrong one, but I did use the same thing, the vital preset. It's the exact same preset. And then I'm doing this, which is almost exactly the same except I cut more low mids. So I'll play this on and off. So as you can hear with this on, just takes away lots of those low mids that kind of make it muddy. And I think it just makes it fit better in the track. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, the next part here during the buildup, uh, what happens is I have this exact same preset, except I just put it in reverse here. So if we listen to this. I do the same thing. 
I, I don't cut as many low mids. And I have a reverb on it, its own reverb, kind of a longer one. And it's all going into this room bus here. I just kind of wanted to break things up a little bit with that in there. Uh, another thing I should probably go over the pad. So for that, I use this crystal pad. I actually made this device also. It's a nice wavetable thing here. If I solo it here, you can kind of hear in the background, especially during this buildup. I think a really nice kind of lush sound, but I want it kind of far in the background. So what I did here is just low pass, high pass filters here, and then a little bit of low mids to cut out so I could have that filled more with the guitar or the reverse guitar in that part there. And this part's actually going through the whole song, I believe, but it's so far in the back, uh, you can't really hear it too much. Let's move on to the drop here. Now, this first part, I don't have any kind of bass going. So it doesn't actually start until it drops. So let's listen to the whole build up. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get into the bass since it shows up here in the drop. I use this Reese bass. This is just another device. I made this one. I think I actually did a video about how I did this. So you can hear it just by itself here. So I have that. I also have some of this here. Uh, what I'm doing here with this is I'm actually cutting off the low end, but not for the whole thing, just for the sides. So if you look inside number one here, I have the high pass filter, but it's not on the mids and the sides. It's only on the sides. So I'm getting sub, some sub information there. So that's why I did that with M Auto Dynamic EQ. I think it's a really good use of that. Some people don't know you can do that. So you see here, it's normally set to left, right by default, but here I set it to mid side like that. And from there, I can just go into each band and have it affect the mids, the mids and the side, or just the sides, which is what I'm doing. After that, I have a flanger on it. I'll let you hear it with and without. You just hear a little bit more like grind and more stereo information. So that's what I wanted with that. That's why I put that on there. And I think that's about it. Another thing I should probably go over is the drums. That's kind of important here. So for the drums, what I did is I first went into the rhythm generator here. And I just set the snare drums and everything here. Uh, you might be wondering, like, why do you have snare drum one and two going at the same time? And the reason is I have them at different levels so minimal level and maximal level for all of these so i believe this one here if i select it did i do that correctly not sure if i did uh let's see so the minimal and maximal levels mean that when you generate all the ones that are uh, have a lower maximal level won't be on the high notes of the keyboard i'll, I'll show you there's different loop boxes and things and notes on the keyboard it won't make sense while I'm explaining this. Uh, but if you use the opposite and you increase the maximal level, those won't be in the minimum. So here you see like I have lots of kind of like ghost notes here. When you look after I generated it in the rhythm ed editor for the beats like this, like, oh, there's no ghost notes. Like, oh, I'm not seeing any of this, like the shakers. And that's how you do it. Use the minimal level and maximal level to make sure that, oh, some of these don't have all the different uh, shakers or ghost notes. 
But as we go from like C to D, a little bit different. F, now we're starting to see some of those shakers and some of those ghost notes show up like that. And that's where they're in there. So this one actually has the drum, snare drum one and two playing at the same time. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. It's done now. And that's basically the idea behind it. I kind of wanted something kind of upbeat, up tempo to really drive the song along. So that's what I did. Another thing here is you look at these ghost notes, like why are these so small? Now, the reason is I changed the probability. So what's going to happen is these aren't going to play every single time. So right now, these are about 40%. So 40% of the time, these small notes are going to play. And that's going to create some ghost notes. So if you listen to the snare drum, let me solo this. And you'll notice that these small notes aren't triggered every single time, just sometimes like this. One note in here, which I'm not really liking, but you get the idea. That kind of keeps it more real, I guess. I don't know if a real drummer would actually play this, but I wanted some variation so it wasn't so mechanical every single time. And that's a way you can do that. So let me see here. Let me. I don't need to unsolo that, I believe. Should play everything. And after that, I think it's pretty straightforward i have some risers in here some of these i just pulled cymbal samples and turned them backwards some of them i used m sound factory with the riser uh device to make some of these if you listen to some of them i think these are just cymbals no actually i think that was the riser device this should be a cymbal I take that back. That wasn't a symbol either. That was also the riser device. I know there's one of them I used a uh, symbol. Maybe it's this. Now that was a backward symbol. So I think the riser device inside M Sound Factory actually works well. I think it worked well for this, at least. I, I created that device too. Uh, so that's what I used for some of the transitions. I thought it kind of gave it a little bit more activity and bounce. Another thing I did, which maybe people didn't know about, but I grouped all these together. So the chord elements, I have the guitar loop, that pad I showed you, the electric piano, and the bass. All of these are together. And I sent them into this kind of bus here, and I'm using the M Auto Dynamic EQ. I thought, okay, I want to cut a little bit of this just so the lead guitar will poke through, make, it, make space for it there. But the big thing I did is I used M Spectral Dynamics. and if you watch that during the verse and the drop, I'll play it quickly. You can see that the electric guitar is ducking all the chordal elements. And instead of just doing a normal compressor, which is going to drop everything down and maybe create pumping, this one is only going to cut the frequencies that the guitar is playing, like this. Okay, maybe I'm only doing that during the drop. Here we go. So that way I make sure I always have space and that lead guitar is always coming through very clearly with that. Uh, the last part is I just had these electric guitars doing the harmonies. There's nothing really much to it here. I'm just doing the same by preset I had and then I'm feeding these two into this and cutting off lots of the low and high end like I did before. And let's see, I have lead guitar here, play these all together. So 
So that's all I'm doing there. That sounds a little bit boxy. Maybe I should have removed a little bit more of the mids from there, but I think you get the idea. Finally, uh, we have the room reverb, which I sent a lot of things into. So this is just a fairly small room. And so a lot of the tracks are going to there, almost all of them actually are going to that small room. And then I have a longer re reverb here, which I'm putting some other things into like the pad. And let me see, did I put anything else? Maybe just the pad and the risers were going into that because I wanted to make those, you know, just a little bit uh, uh, longer and more lush like this. So that's all I'm doing there. Uh, let me see, is there anything else I sent? Oh, I think I also ducked the bass with the kick drum like this. So I went to M Auto Dynamic EQ. Let me make sure this is working. Now you see, I believe it's band two here is being ducked. And so all I did was I went into here and I turned the dynamics down. The problem with this is if I normally do this, the snare drum is going to trigger it. And I don't want that. I just want the bass drum to trigger it. So what I had to do was enable the side chain, number one. Uh, but then when I went in there, I believe I went into the advanced here and I turned on the band pass like this. And so I turned the low pass really far down. So that's going to eliminate the snare drum and just leave the bass elements of our drum set and that will allow us to duck just that part. Let me see. I'll have to turn this on and we'll play it and I'll turn on the listen so you can hear what the side chain is listening to. Okay, so I finally got it. So there you could hear just that bass drum hitting and that's what's going to be ducking the bass note there. So you actually can get in there and get fairly detailed with this. Usually I don't, I kind of just leave it at the default, but here I set the release to a quarter note. That's really easy using this too. So that's all I did there to try to make this kind of go with the track. Hopefully it worked well. So that's it. Hopefully I answered any questions you might have about this. If you have any others, please leave them down below and I will try to answer them. Uh, but this is just something I wrote. I was inspired by a Brandon Sanderson book and I just wanted to make something that was kind of like upbeat, sounded like somebody was, you know, just running around a planet constantly on the move and kind of exciting. So hopefully this did this, did that. And hopefully you like this. So please Give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below, and please check out all the other plugins at melterproduction.com. Till next time, see you.